the examination of the self. One must separate the idea of self from the cause from which it springs. The idea of the self is principally derived from a deluded apprehension of the skandhas, or aggregates, from the amassing of different things. The various skandhas of which we are composed are made up of many, many different individual elements. Because of the gross way in which we perceive, we can't see all the minute and brief elements which make up existence. We tend to lump them together and see just one thing. Once we see many things as one, we tend to name it, define it, and give it an identity. So when we see things with our perception, we do not see many minute, short-lived components, but tend to see them as a whole and solidify them as real and existent. It is because we relate to gross wholes and give them an identity that we develop this idea of self. We also have a problem with time. There is no point at which we could say, at this point there wasn't that delusion, and then at this point this mistaken view took place. The mistake is beginningless. When one first sees the word beginningless in Buddhist texts, it seems a rather unusual idea that a delusion could, have, could not have a beginning. However, if we examine almost anything, we find it is beginningless. For example, take a brass pot. It was probably made in India, but that was not its beginning, because in India it was made from brass. That brass came from ore and we can trace the ore back through time by tracing all the minute particles of which it is made up going back forever. Nearly everything we examine is beginningless. So it is the same with the conception of self. If one traces it back, one keeps going back and back and back. It is not as though there is one point in which one was clear and the next delusion suddenly took place. One can never find the beginning. It is something happening all the time because of the grossness of our perception and the mistaken consciousness makes, it, makes as it labels the objects of perception. For instance, consider the example of a flower and its seed. This example demonstrates that one thing originates from another. Now there is a flower, but when we trace it back, we find there was a seed, and the seed itself came from a flower, and so on. The same with a brass pot. We can trace it back to some geological time, and never find a point where the pot actually began. The point is that it is beginningless. When we examine our own existence, we say there is suffering because of karma, and that there is karma because of the defilements, and the defilements are there because of ignorance. But we cannot find one point where this process began, because if we trace it back, we find that each step involves more history. We can keep going back and back, and each event has even more history behind it, and so on. That is why we say it is beginningless, because we cannot answer the question, what happened in the beginning? It is not as though there was one ignorant thought, and that was the beginning of everything. Ignorance is taking place continually, and has been occurring since the beginning, without beginning. Ignorance is then a continuing mistake and perception of the minute aggregates. We conceptualize the idea of a thing which isn't there except in the mind of the observer. This is the actual process of ignorance which takes place over and over again. Even though there are so many different components in the skandhas, we conceive them as a mistaken I. Perceiving the millions and millions of particles of the pot as a single idea of a pot is the same form of mistaken perception. This faulty perception continues into the future and we can trace it back into the past. The inability to perceive correctly is continuous. That process occurs again and again. All the problems have come from that ignorance.
We can never find a beginning, but it does have an end because once we pierce this delusion and reach the truth, we can find liberation from the whole process.